representative of Belize to take the floor. Mr. President, Belize aligns itself with the statements made earlier by St. Lucia on behalf of the Caribbean community, El Salvador on behalf of SICA, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines on behalf of the community of Latin American and Caribbean states, as well as the statements made by Uganda on behalf of the Group of 77 and China, and Azerbaijan on behalf of the Non-Aligned Movement. And we welcome the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Cuba, His Excellency Bruno Rodriguez. Belize registers again its unequivocal condemnation of the economic, commercial, and financial embargo imposed by the United States of America against Cuba. For over three decades, the General Assembly has consistently and with near unanimity called for the end of the legal, immoral, and unjustified financial, commercial, and trade embargo imposed on Cuba. And yet, the embargo continues to not only be imposed, but intensified by the United States against Cuba in audacious defiance of the Charter of the United Nations, international law, and the resounding call of this General Assembly through 30 successive resolutions. Mr. President, all members of the United Nations have a duty to respect and adhere to the purposes and principles of the UN Charter, including respect for sovereignty, non-interference, the peaceful settlement of disputes, and the maintenance of friendly relations among states. There are no exceptions for violations of international law, and there is no member state above the law. The unilateral economic, commercial, and financial embargo imposed by the United States of America is a clear violation of the Charter and the international law. Extraterritorial applications of third states' laws is contrary to the letter and spirit of the provisions of the Charter and undermines the principles of multilateralism to which we are all committed. We furthermore reject the designation of the United States of, uh, of Cuba on its list of state sponsors of terrorism, a measure which only serves to exacerbate further and compound the inhumane consequences of the embargo. Mr. President, the Secretary General's report A7881-84 documents in harrowing details the impact and cost of the embargo on Cuba. In one year, the embargo caused estimated losses of over $4.8 billion to the Cuban economy. The embargo has had the deliberate effect of hindering Cuba's recovery from COVID-19, frustrating its sustainable development, and isolating it from the international trade and financial system. Even more unconscionable were the attempts to deny Cuba access to medical supplies during the pandemic itself. Notwithstanding the toll that the embargo has caused Cuba, the Cuban spirit of resilience, ingenuity, generosity, and brotherhood has characterized its engagement with Belize and developing countries globally. Cuba continues to be a force for goodwill and development in our region. Cuban doctors are an integral part of Belize's healthcare system. Many Belizean students receive scholarships for professional training in Cuba in areas as diverse as medicine, physical education, computer science, mathematics, and veterinary medicine. And continu Cuba continues to provide technical assistance in critical areas including climate change, response, and agriculture. Belize stands in solidarity with Cuba and will vote in support of Resolution L.5. We reiterate our call for the United States to immediately and unconditionally lift the embargo it has illegally imposed on Cuba. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative.